Hello, welcome back to the woods. And welcome back to a video that does what it says on the tin. How to pimp your bushcraft smock. Or to be more exact, how to pimp your 30 quid off Amazon bushcraft smock. For those of you who are regular viewers to the channel, of course you will remember in my Bushcraft on a Budget series I did all about clothing and how you can actually get some pretty good Bushcraft clothing for not a lot of money and it doesn't always mean going to the army surplus shop. Indeed, this smock that I'm wearing, these are just 30 quid off Amazon and they are a great, great bit of kit. We also looked at some of the trousers, uh, particularly the tough stuff, workwear trousers, which again are excellent stuff for wearing when we are out in the woods. So what I want to look at in this video is how you can turn one of these, these little cheapo, less than 30 pounds off Amazon smocks into something that is equally as good as something that is three, four, in some cases, 10 times the price of one of these little smocks off Amazon. And it's not as difficult as you think. So the first thing we need to ask ourselves is, well, why the difference in the cost? Is it the design? Well, this is an overhead smock. It's got a hood, it's got pockets. So it's very, very similar to some of the File Raven, I think it's a number three smock, or indeed the uh, Pilgrim from Helicontex, or indeed the overhead anorak that Veris Talika does. They're all overhead smocks with a hood and with pockets. So if it's not the design, perhaps it's the fabric because companies like File Raven, well, they use uh, G1000 fabric and Helicontex use Dura Canvas and they're quite specialist fabrics aren't they? They're certainly not the same as this that our cheapo £30 smock from Amazon is, surely not. Well if you look at any smock, any item of clothing, there's a little label in there which tells you what it's made out of and on both Fail Raven and Helicontex and Veris Talika and a whole lot of other companies that are making outdoor gear. What you'll find is if you read that label, it's two words, polyester and cotton. And there's two sets of numbers, 65% and 35%. And that is the makeup of G1000 and Dura Canvas. They are woven differently, but the actual makeup of the fabric is the same as this our 30 pound smock from Amazon. So why the massive price difference? It's a basic same design. The fabric is very, very similar. Are you just paying for the name? Or are you paying for all those other little features, those nice little touches that you get on a lot of those high-end jackets. Those things that do actually take a little bit of time to do. Yes, we know the manufacturer on, on garments from Helicontex is absolutely superb. The quality is excellent, but they also have those really, really nice little finishing touches. And it's those little features and touches that push the price up in my opinion because they take that little bit of time to do but they're not actually that difficult to do all you have to do is decide well what features you want on your smock if you've got one of these what features are you going to put onto it so what I did was I drew on my pad a basic picture of this, the basic cheapo smock. And I then added all the little features that I would like. So, on the hood, because it's a pretty basic hood on these, I wanted a hood adjuster. I also wanted some sort of wired peak on it, because particularly as I'm a glasses wearer, if it chucks it down with rain, I want to be able to flip my hood up and keep the rain out of my eyes, and more importantly, off my glasses. I also wanted gear loops on quite a few of the smocks particularly like the uh, pilgrim from helicontex it's got 
little attachment points inside the pockets that you can attach your gear to so you don't lose it. This bit here with the Velcro, I don't really like it. I much prefer a zip or even better, press studs. Something that I can just push and close up, something that's reliable, something that's not, not gonna go wrong. Uh, I also wanted to replace the Velcro on the adjusters, uh, on the sleeves, etc. Because the Velcro they use on these, well, they had to save money somewhere uh, and they use some pretty rubbish Velcro. But Velcro is cheap and it's easy to replace. I also wanted pit zips, one underneath, that A, help me ventilate, B, also help get this on off smock uh, on and off nice and easy. One of the complaints I've seen recently on YouTube about the um, Pilgrim smock from Helicontex is it's really difficult to get on and off. Well, if you have full length zips down the sides, they're not. Look at the Buffalo shirt. That's what they've done with theirs and they're a great, great item. Also what I wanted on there was some way of making the jacket longer because these are quite a good length. This is size XL, but it could do with being a good four or five inches longer, particularly for the winter. For the summer, I don't always want something that long. So whatever I have in the way of extra length, I also need some way of being able to, to take it up and down. I also wanted, and again, it's an idea that I borrowed from the Buffalo shirt, some sort of adjuster inside this roo pocket to keep it cinched across so that I could close it down and seal that warm air inside in the winter months. So just a, another way of keeping the weather out. And I also, inside this, these sort of kangaroo hand through hand warmer pockets, are great, they're really good. I can run a hip belt uh, from my rucksack through there if I'm carrying a big load. The problem with them is, as you put stuff in, well, it tends to shift. So what goes in this side might then end up over there and you're busy looking for stuff, particularly if you've got multiple things in there. So I wanted some way of compartmentalizing the uh, main hand warmer pocket on here. I'd seen a great idea on the Leicester River bushcraft shirt and I thought yeah that is a really good idea just three simple lines of stitching that are about four inches long across the bottom of the pocket that would be a great great solution. Now what I also wanted was something that would integrate with all my other bits of outdoor gear, particularly stuff like my wool shirt, or my wool bush shirt, and my waterproof Gore-Tex liner. So it needed to be long enough to cover all of, all of those. It had to be able to integrate in with it all. So it just made for a better user experience. I also wanted it all to be easy to do because probably like you, I haven't got a whole lot of spare time. So whatever modifications I made needed to be nice and simple. I also, well, I didn't want them to cost a fortune. So I had to be using stuff that was readily available and easy as well as easy to do. So I sort of set myself a budget of about, I guess I spent no more than about 15 pounds total on the modifications that I would do. So that's still only 45 pounds. That's less than half the price of a Pilgrim's mock. Still comes in less than a Varus Talika uh, overhead anorak and well, Foul Raven, let's not even go there. So one of my other considerations with putting this mock together, I decided that the only type of stitching I would do was basic straight stitch. No multi zigzag, no buttonholes, nothing at all like that. That way, you guys, if you've got a basic sewing machine, and I mean basic, then you should be able to do it. Where I've used uh, nylon and press studs, or even where I've set press studs into the fabric, again, I've kept it very simple. I used a little Dremel hot gun. What I used to use was a piece of wire, a pair of pliers, and I would just warm up the wire, and then I usually over the gas stove, and then melt the holes through. What this does is it seals the hole, 
as it goes through allowing your press stud to be set but also those edges don't fray so it, again it gives you a nice long lasting effect on there so again all stuff to keep it nice and simple press studs well press studs you can buy a press stud setting kit it's very very easy to do you don't need a special machine to do it you can just do it with a little couple of setting tools which you get in the kit and a hammer that's all you need for setting press studs and if you get decent quality ones they will last you for years and years now what this isn't is a how-to video so I'm not going to show you step by step how to put a zip in how to sew an extra piece of fabric on because there's this great resource called YouTube and if you go on there there are people on there who specialize in those particular things who will do very good videos on how to put a zip in how to sew different bits of fabric on in different ways so you enclose all your seams that's what, not what this is about this is a video about well inspiring you getting you out there to give it a go because it is really really easy to do you've just got to do it And this is the finished result. So starting at the top, we have the hood on the back. It's got a little adjuster, and that is literally just a little piece of 25 mil webbing with a little ladder lock adjuster on it. And you just pull it up and down, and it just decreases the volume. I've also put a little wired visor that you can shape quite easily. And to do that, all you do is unpick the edge of the hood. You then take a piece of fabric that's half moon shaped and along the straight edge, you just insert a little piece of electrical wire with the plastic coating on and you just turn the ends in. And that gives you this malleable visor. By turning the ends in, it means they're not gonna push through the fabric. So that is the hood usual little adjusters here just for cinching it all down and obviously I have my pop studs on there in the top here I've also got a little piece of velcro and that links into the uh, hood on my little Gore-Tex liner so I can just pull that on put this on over the top as soon as I pull the two hoods together the velcro joins so I've then got a hood that moves up and down as one so gone is the velcro that was there what I've now got is four heavy duty press studs. Nice and reliable, don't ever go wrong. Easy to manipulate even with cold hands. Absolutely ideal and relatively easy to do too. So moving down to the chest pocket, first thing I did was remove the Velcro and I put in decent quality, proper Velcro. It holds a lot more secure. What I also wanted here were attachment points. That way things like compasses or my lighter or even a pocket knife in the winter can all be attached onto those and that way we're not going to lose them. Easy to do, just a little tiny piece of um, webbing that's probably about 15 or so mils long, uh, folded back on itself, sewn across with straight stitch and they're well and truly anchored on there. So next, well, the wrists, 
Again, replace the Velcro and put in a heavier duty Velcro, much, much more secure. My hand warmer, Roo Pocket, well, I put a little press studs on there just to hold those flaps down, just again to make the pockets more secure. What I've also done in here is I've put in a little ladder lock buckle and a strap that runs right the way across. That way I can close down the volume inside, which again helps to seal the weather out and keep the warmth in. Also on the front here, what you'll see is I've put those three bars of stitching in there and that just helps to keep my stuff where I want it. So I've got my wallet in this side and I've got my keys in there uh, uh, and then I've got my lighter down there. So all of those items as I'm moving around through the day stay where I want them, they don't move around. So one of the big major things that I did was I decided that I was gonna put full length zips in the side which is what I've done there. There are two way zips, so they come up from the bottom and they also come down from the top. This allows me to vent if I'm starting to get warm. I can open up the sides to allow air out. It also allows me access to my pockets underneath if need be. So if I'm using my wool bush shirt in the winter underneath this and I want to get to nice warm woolly pockets inside, I can just tuck my hand into there. And these can be accessed either end. So these are a double puller. So I've got one there and I've got one there. And that allows you loads and loads of flexibility when doing it. And then also at the bottom, to allow me to shorten it, I've put on a little snap closure which backs up the zip. What that allows me also to do is to use my draw cords. So I've got one on this side which does the back of the jacket and the one on the other side does the front of the jacket and that allows me if the weather's warm I can do the draw cords in and I can have it cinched up blouse around my waist or if the weather's really bad again I can close the weather out by pulling the two draw cords in so again it all gives me that flexibility so that I've got a good year-round garment so one of my overall aims was to make this a garment that I could use year round and in, in doing that I think I have. Yes in the winter it's got all the features, it's got the hood, it's got the long length, <clears throat> I can get it on over the head uh, so you can wear it over other layers, it's got the pockets to put all the extra bits in. And if I want to make it even more weatherproof well I could go out and buy something like green and wax. I don't particularly like the wax, or I could use something like Fab Seal Gold, which is an excellent product. That would make this even more shower resistant and help to keep the weather at bay. In the summertime, well, this is ideal. It's relatively lightweight. It can be worn just over a t-shirt or even on its own. Keeps the environment at bay because it's quite a good hard wearing fabric. It's relatively fast drying. If I want to make it a bit more insect proof, I can wash it in the, I think it's Life Systems, do a washing insect repellent that you wash into your clothing and it helps to keep the bugs away. So all in all, this should be a good year round garment that I can use for many years to come. So you know where to get the jacket from, Amazon. As far as the other bits and pieces, a very, very good source for all outdoor fabrics and the haberdashery that goes with it is a company called Point North. Do a search for Pro Fabrics online. I'll put a link in the description box down below. The guys over there are super, super helpful. They've been going for a very long time. 1974, I believe they started. I started using them back in, I think it was about 1984. I saw an advert for them in the back of an outdoor magazine. I sent off and got a paper catalogue that's how long ago that was and I've been using them ever since. The service and the quality of the stuff that they, they uh, send out is absolutely superb. So go over and give them a try. As I said, I will put the uh, link in the description box down below for them. Now as far as extra fabric for this project goes, well I just used a bit of an old smock. Uh, that had to be the same smock one that I've battered the hell out of for years to um, create the extra fabric. But you could use all sorts of fabric. An old pair of combat trousers, excellent. Even if it's a different pattern, if you've got, I don't know, MTP or DPM, well, you could put that on as a contrast. It doesn't matter. Again, it's stuff that you've got 
readily to hand or stuff that you might have an old pair of combats where they've got holes in the knees well there's no holes on the back of the legs that fabric is fine and you could use that for this project So I know there will be some people who are very disappointed that it's not a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it. Well, the idea of this is that it inspires you to go out and give it a go yourself. As I said, there's some very talented people on YouTube who can show you how to do all of those alterations, dedicated sewing channels, etc., who can show you how to do it properly, way better than I can. So go on there and give it a go. I think for my 29 pound Amazon smock and probably about four hours work and about, well, less than 15 pounds, I think I've actually got a smock that's gonna last me for years and it's totally practical. It's not what somebody else thinks I want. It's not something that somebody else has designed. It's what I wanted. It's got all the features I want for the uses that I'm going to put it to and I think it's absolutely ideal. You give it a go. I think that's everything. I've been Neil and until next time, stay safe in the woods.